Hello everyone, I'm Katie. I'm a Marine Parks campaigner at AMCS. Thanks for having me here. A little bit about me. I've got a background in community cultural development and the arts. I'm a marine social scientist. Yes, that's a thing and it's equally as cool and equally as important as any of the other marine sciences. Uh, and I'm also doing a PhD in how we can build capacity in our communities for marine conservation specifically. Uh, so I've got a bunch of questions here and they're great. I am going to merge a couple of them together as I think I might be able to give a simpler answer to them. Um, the first is Beatrice asks, what is the difference between a marine park and a conservation zone? And James asked, how many marine parks are there in Australia and can you go fishing in a marine park? Uh, the terminology around marine parks can be a little bit confusing and to make things even more difficult, different places use different names for all the bits and pieces that go into them. So marine parks is the term that we commonly use to talk about marine protected areas or MPAs. Uh, and what MPAs are basically is just an area with a boundary that we earmark to protect and we manage to maintain biodiversity. So MPAs, easiest to think about them as a little like a city zoning plan. The outer edges of the marine park are just like the boundaries of a city and within them are areas that we earmark for a different the different range of things that we're allowed to do within them so the names of each of those zones within a marine park or marine protected area are often named differently again for different marine parks but there are some similarities the greatest level of protection within a broader marine park are the zones that we at AMCS call marine sanctuaries now that again is a common use term for the areas that are most highly protected and they're usually co coloured green on a zoning map. In my local marine park, I'm looking at a map of it now, it's Moreton Bay Marine Park, the official name for those zones is Marine National Parks and that's actually a really good name because these places are the closest that we have on the water to national parks on land. They're very similar. We can visit, we can enjoy, we can do all sorts of recreational activities there, but we just have to leave it as we found it. So people can't collect corals or take crabs or fish home, for example. Now, other than the sanctuary zones or the, the green zones, the rest of the different zones in a marine protected area, and this includes conservation park zones, Beatrice, um, they arrange for other ways that you can experience the park. And for example, in Moreton Bay, all of those different zones, you're allowed to go fishing and crabbing and even use nets to catch bait. So James, yes, you're absolutely allowed to fish in, in a marine park. The sanctuary zones or green zones where you can't fish usually make up the smallest proportion of the total marine park area. Now about how many parks there are, um, they, because they use these different official naming term, terms, it's a little bit tricky, so I'll talk about MPAs here. Offshore MPAs in Australia are managed by the Commonwealth Government, and there are 58 of those. The marine protected areas that are closer to our shores are managed by each state, and the total of those around Australia is 92. But the number from state to state really varies. So, for example, in the Northern Territory, we've got two, and in Tasmania, you've got 35. But those numbers don't really tell the whole story. So the 35 MPAs in Tasmania, for example, only make up 6.5% of state waters. And the full sanctuary zones across all of the marine parks across all of Tasmania only make up 5.6% 5, 5 of all of state waters. Whereas in Queensland, on the other hand, we've, got, we've only got three MPAs but they cover 50% of our state waters. Although the sanctuaries still only cover about 12%. Confusing? <laughs> um, but as an indication, we know the scientists have told us that if we wanna look after our oceans, we really need 30% of our global oceans fully protected in these sanctuary zones. So Australia still has a pretty long way to go. Um, I hope that answered those two questions. Uh, Kate asks what my vision is for Australia's oceans and what we're doing wrong. Kate, first of all, great name, love it. We've got an army of Kates at AMCS and we think we're great. 
but thanks for asking me this. I love talking about my vision for the future. It's not just for the oceans, it's for us as well. And that's for us to recognize that we're in a relationship with our natural world, whether we acknowledge it, whether we like it or not. And just as in any relationship, our rights are really important, but we also have to balance that with some care and responsibility or that relationship really quickly breaks down. So we definitely can repair the oceans, but we have to be frank. It's We have to look at this honestly and go, it's not the ocean's fault that our relationship is becoming less positive. Um, my vision is that every person understands the connection that we have to the oceans and what it provides us but that's kind of the boring bit what i'd really love is for everyone to feel that connection to being out in nature and to appreciate to feel the gratitude for this that salt air for the oxygen that we breathe which is provided by the ocean and on top of that the miracle of all these astonishing things that are out there all these critters that have this perfect they that they're perfect for what they are and they hold this perfect place within the ecosystem just as we do uh, so to follow on from that Anita asks why we need marine parks well the really practical answer to this is if you think about the ocean as a big bank account we know that we are quite simply taking more out of it than is being replenished and that that's in climate change that's in pollution even before you get to direct withdrawals like fishing so marine protected areas marine parks mpas are just step one in taking control over our bank balance we're saying whoa 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 we've got to think about making some choices over at least a part of our balance to ensure that that account isn't drained completely and when we talk about those highly protected areas, the sanctuaries, these are the parts that we put aside in an investment account. We say we're going to leave this bit completely alone in the hope that it's going to pay us interest and replenish at least part of what we're losing. So I'm going to borrow from Sylvia Earle, that brilliant distinguished marine scientist who calls marine sanctuaries give back areas. I can't better that. They're the best mechanisms that we have that humans can use right now, not only to do all that thing about replenishing the balance, but also to acknowledge that we have a place within nature and to start exercising some of those responsibilities that we have in turn for all the things that we're given tangible and intangible benefits that healthy environments give us. Um, and finally, Bob has asked what AMCS has achieved through our marine parks campaigns, which is fabulous. AMCS has been intricately connected with almost every marine park in Australia. Um, for 45 years, we've been campaigning for MPAs and there's hardly any that we haven't been involved in. AMCS actually came about to get together community support to stop mining on Ellis Reef in the Great Barrier Reef which thinking back now is hardly imaginable these days, but that was, that was how AMCS was formed and later we helped getting support for the declaration for the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park. Um, to name a couple of others of our favorites, well, they're all our favorites, we love them all. Um, we've also been involved in Ningaloo Marine Park in WA where the incredible whale sharks gather Moreton Bay and Great Sandy in Queensland, of course, and in New South Wales, where a number of marine parks like Solitary Islands and Batemans protect endangered grey nurse sharks, as well as fur seals and penguins. And of course, one of our most recent, um, and all of Australia should be really proud of the newest marine park in Australia, which is Lemon Bight in the Northern Territory. So there's heaps more, of course, to mention. But the short answer, I'm running out of time, is too many to count. Anyway, thank you so much for having me. And I know it's not World Oceans Day anymore, but every day is Oceans Day for us. And in reality, so happy Oceans Day, Oceans Week, Oceans Month. Go get salty.